And let's talk about tonic immobility because freeze and tonic immobility are often used interchangeably, but they do refer to really distinct neurobiological and physiological reactions in the body. So tonic immobility is more of a last resort survival response when escape or defense is impossible, often followed by shame and confusion. It's triggered by intense inescapable threat, often during a sexual assault, a violence, or when one is experiencing an extreme fear. And this is characterized by involuntary motor and vocal inhibition and rigid paralysis. Signs of tonic immobility are frozen body, often very stiff, wide-eyed stillness, hypervigilance, high internal activation, but no movement is possible. And this can involve vocal suppression, but internal cognition may still be active, a slowed heart rate and breathing, altered time perception or dissociation. And this can last for minutes to hours. So where freeze is this pause and preparing for an action, tonic immobility is freeze to survive. It's to avoid pain and to deter threat. And tonic immobility has been well documented in survivors of sexual trauma, childhood abuse, and combat. And it's often accompanied by shame because the body did not fight back or could not flee from the situation, from the danger. And so freeze is earlier in the threat cascade and it may show up subtly in modern life, like freezing in a meeting, like we were talking about being unable to speak. Yeah, that tonic and mobility is like further on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Like this is mm -hmm. a big life-threatening event and I can't escape. And I think more people when we say are stuck in a chronic freeze response, it's more tonic and mobility than it is like freeze moves on yes freeze moves on and then we'll parcel apart functional freeze too, yeah which is a little Very bit different relatable. from 